One of the most important things is communicating with older people, understanding their need and asking their and explaining their concern and desire. Henrita Botkorska from Umbrella Multicultural Community Care with us today to talk about the organization. Happy to be with us today, Henny. Thank you so much for having me today and I'm really happy to be on, um, on this show. Hany or Henrita, that's your leg, you will like uh, yeah, Henny call you is Henny, fine. yeah. Uh, Henny, um, talk about your organization first. Yep. You give us an idea about your organization. So Umbrella Multicultural Community Care Services Inc, or as we just like to call it Umbrella, is founded 20 years ago by the Polish community and a social worker in the Polish community. Her name is Anna Harrison, who is also still our CEO. So she's our founder and um, the CEO of Umbrella. And uh, her and her team um, had a dream. They wanted to have all everyone under one umbrella of quality care services. They recognized that even back at the time, mainstream services were not suitable for the often vulnerable and resource intensive uh, ethnic elders. So they funded Umbrella and they had a specific goal in mind. They knew that uh, just providing cleaning or gardening to someone is not going to keep them at home. They knew that what's keep people at home and happy and healthy into their long, long time oh, is actually great. language and the culture and connecting with people. So this is what Umbrella is about. Even after 20 years, um, we are still serving the elderly community members from um, 67 different ethnic communities. We speak over 57 different languages. And yeah, we are most, our biggest, one of our biggest operation is actually still the social groups uh, where we provide uh, cultural and language specific uh, activities to our seniors. So they can still happy, they can stay happy and connected with their community. Then then you start only for the uh, uh, Polish community? Originally, yes, but mm -hmm. even after four years. Um, so Umbrella got incorporated in 2004, and uh, but even in that first four years, uh, we actually gained 27 other cultures. Um, and Umbrella, what we do, we link people, the support worker is linked to the client based on their language and culture. So they felt like they are connected to the organization because we're always matching them with their communities and that, people from the community. And that, that's your goal. Yes, that's your goal of your uh, organization. Yes, that's yeah. that's that's what yeah. we want to do. Yes. Then can you tell us what is the service you provide? Only only that's cleaning and uh, no the, much uh, visiting the people in their home. Yep. So we yeah. have um, uh, three different programs. Mm. Uh, one of them is the Commonwealth Home Support Program. It's mm. a low level care services that's provided in the community in people's mm. houses. It's one or two services, so it can be cleaning, gardening, or social support, but it's one or two. So it's very low level. It's just for people who just need a little bit of help at home. Then there's the next level, which is called the home care packages, which most people may know about. This is for people who need more care at home to stay at home. So Umbrella's goal is keep people in their homes, with their families, with their communities. So we do everything we can and what the person needs in order to stay in their homes. Um, and yes, that can be domestic assistance, there can be home maintenance like gardening yeah, but it. also oh, uh, going yeah. out for transport doing yeah. shopping going out for uh, having fun yeah. so there's a lot of services that we can provide we also have the community visitor scheme which is a program provided uh, by volunteers so bilingual volunteers mm -hmm. visiting people in the community seniors in the community who live at home or in nursing home who are socially isolated for one, one reason or another they can't speak their language to anyone else so we send sending someone in who can speak their language oh, wow. and it's like yeah. a friendship program and one of the most beautiful program uh, used to run it as well it's fantastic and you should see the happiness on the people's faces when they hear their language from from a volunteer it's absolutely amazing okay then what about the employee is that all there are volunteer or they get paid or yep 
Yeah. So the most services run by paid volunteers and yeah. we're actually looking for more because our organization is really expanding and we're looking for people with sk language skills. So for us, it's so important for people finding people who speak languages mm -hmm. because we're matching people based on their language. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, so around 160 people um, are on our paid staff and we have around 80 volunteers. So our volunteer workforce is big, but it's most related to the community visitor scheme because it is a volunteer based program mm -hmm. so we have to find volunteers to go and visit as a friend mm -hmm. um, someone in the community who may need would like to speak to and have some you know let's speak to someone yeah I think you're facing you know difficulties because it is working with uh, elderly people at what is the difficulties you're facing and I think it is uh, face, uh, dealing with uh, uh, elderly people it's not easy especially when it comes to languages. So a lot of our communities that we're working with not necessarily understanding what the HK services are. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions, a lot of myth around what the, they think it's nursing homes only. They think that we're going to take away grandma, they, they're going to get into a nursing home, which is not true. And this is one of the problem when it comes to people coming into the system to talk to them about and empowering them saying, look, sometimes it's just little things that you may need in order to stay at home. And mm -hmm. if it's okay, I'll tell you a story. I helped one a family who had a lovely mom and, and uh, the grandma, and, they had, and she had three children, a daughter and two sons. Mm -hmm. The daughter was cooking for her, cleaning for her, looking after the oh, household. Wow. The one son was transporting her, taking her out, yeah. doing the finances. The other son was looking after the house, so fixing the lights, doing the gardening and everything. But one thing they could not you do... offer a family for yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. The, the, she was well-serviced. Yeah. But one thing that they could not offer her was safety, why they are away because they had their own lives they have their own grandchildren you mm. know so she had actually three falls at home because she lived in an older house and the doctor said one more fall and you have to go into nursing home because she was half paralyzed yeah nearly half paralyzed so we went in and we called my age care and the only thing that happened in the household the family is still looking after the way they want to and really giving all their love and support but we installed some rail they was installed some rails and changed the bathroom so it's like a walk-in bathroom uh, shower instead of a step in oh. so they reduce the um, uh, the the hazards in the household and that's oh. also the HK system in Australia mm -hmm. so this is one of our struggles is to especially the new and emerging communities mm -hmm. to go talk to them and and uh, explain to them that the HK system is there to help them the things they can't do because a lot of people are busy they have to work they have to leave the elderly at home alone yeah. you know there's a lot of things that they can get to make sure that everyone is at peace and they know that their loved one is safe at mm -hmm. home um, and this is one of the program that for example I do called the HK system navigator I do go out to communities and talk to them about the HK system and explain to them yeah. you know this is how you can keep your elderly loved ones safe happy and connected because that's also as I said very important for us for them to have mm. lots of fun yeah then uh, do you cooperate with another organization or with the government and the Yes, so um, for example, through my work, I look, work with a lot of the city councils. Um, they have fantastic community engagement teams and we often provide um, information and knowledge about how to work with elderly people from ethnic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I also work on lots of the research. So University of, um, University of Western Australia, UWA, I worked with Curtin before, I worked with um, University of Canberra and, and Adelaide. So if there's a research that's happening into our communities, and if we can add our own knowledge and experience um, to that, and making sure that the research will come out something positive for all of us, mm -hmm. then Umbrella is there to help. We also work with a lot of the other providers, um, brokering our services. So some of the bigger providers brokering our staff who speak a particular language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Umbrella is very well connected. Yeah. And of course, we know the ethnic communities. So we worked with a lot of the ethnic communities lot, yeah. and associations before. Then... Uh, how is your uh, organization uh, funded? Yep, so Umbrella is funded uh, primarily through the federal government, the Department of Health. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, um, so all of our programs is from Department of Health under the My Age Care or the HK mm -hmm. system. Uh, we have some local grants that I'm running, but majority is from the is from the federal government. And this is why it is difficult. A lot of people come in and they want to join Umbrella because they see all the fun that we are having, mm -hmm. you know. We have 25 buses. We're moving around 500 seniors 
teachers um, every week to our mm-hmm. center, through our center. So it's a very busy, fun, and and just lovely environment. So people want to join, but unfortunately, Umbrella is um, Umbrella um, because we funded by the government. We have to follow all the rules, so they have to be assessed and get into the HK system in order to access our um, uh, our multi award winning services. Actually, yeah. And then how many clients you have? We have around 1,000 clients. Ah, wow. Yes. Yeah. Huge. Uh, okay. Uh, how can people then uh, communicate with uh, you or your organization? How they can reach you? Yep. Yeah. So um, please, if you're interested to learn more, uh, contact me. My name is Henrietta Podgorska. We are also on uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram. Just look for Umbrella Community K. And... Um, yeah, my uh, number is nine two seven five double four double one. So just ask for Henrietta, and also my um, my email is h dot podgorska p o d g o r s k a at umbrella community But I'm hoping to give it to you so you can have it in the description. So if anyone wants to contact me, I would be very happy to have a chat. And as I said, we have a we have a service that helps um, ethnic communities to understand the HK system and how they can utilize that service for mm-hmm. their elders. So please give me a contact and I'm happy to go out and have a chat to your communities. Okay, Henry, uh, do you like to add anything at the end of episode no i think that was it thank you so much i really enjoyed uh, oh, the talking thank you so much for having us to have you today with us and at the end of today episode uh, we have a lot of thanks to you and our audience thank you so much thank you for having us